happy holidays and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Doing great. Um, I was talking to a couple guys yesterday, uh, Means, Adi, and Terrell. They kept saying, hey, we just got to play together. So uh, what I mean, what does that look like in, uh, as they try to rebound after the San Francisco performance? We just got to play and do our, do our job. We, for whatever reason, and that – particular game, I'll give San Francisco some credit. They did some things we kind of were different than what they had done in the past. So that's, but that's good offense. That's changing things up and we got to be able to change with them, which we did on a couple. We actually played better in the second half. Uh, first half's one, we just did some things just so, so uncharacteristic and nothing we had done in practice. And uh, I don't really, you know, I asked the players and nobody really has an explanation, but it wasn't just one group, it was everybody. We did. We made some checks that we never make. Well, there wasn't even a check to be made, and so I just think guys are we're pressing a little bit to do too much, and I think that's what happens. You think too much, and you just don't follow quite what you you need to do. And sometimes you you do that. And I, I've done it before as a coach too. I'm, and I think I pressed in that game a little bit in the first half too, because all of a sudden I see a couple things that I just didn't expect. And so then all of a sudden I try to change and go to something else. And the truth is I could have maybe run it again and maybe, they, maybe it was just that one time that was a problem. But all of a sudden I don't go back to it and it's something that we practice kind of a lot during the week. So that, that's on me too. So uh, I think we all kind of pressed in the first half and didn't play very well. We missed tackles. We just did some just really uncharacteristic things. One of the things we had taken a lot of pride in is not giving up very many big plays. And we did in that first half. And then everybody kind of gets in a panic mode. And um, did some things in the red area that just, just were just I, I don't under, didn't understand them, and, I, and they didn't really have an explanation for them. So obviously they didn't understand them either. And if they didn't understand them, then that's coaching. Then we didn't do our job as coaches either. So um, we played better later, uh, but you know by that time it was a little too late. Then uh, the next thing was to amend. They also said, hey, we got to stop the run this week. Detroit likes to run apparently with the. Uh, well, I guess Swift is back, or uh, Jamal, or and Craig Reynolds' kids been running. I don't think it, it's it, look. They got a, they got a bunch of good backs. I mean, Swift wasn't even there last week, and they ran the ball very good with the third team back. And so uh, this, I think, is more about the personality of the head coach and what they want to be as a team. I mean, they're a physical team. They play hard. He's got them playing hard. You know, everybody looks at that record, but you know, they lost. They, they lost on a 66-yard field goal to the Ravens. You know, they lost by two points, I think, to Chicago. They lost at two points by somebody else, too. I mean, they've played well enough to, to be, you know, have a 500 record or even above. So the record means nothing to us. They are a good running football team. Quarterback's got a strong arm, can make all the throws. He's a good quarterback. Um, you know, it, I have the utmost respect for him. How does that uh, affect the preparation that one is in the COVID program and then the other kids, uh, he's got one start, but uh, he's None, one. other than the fact that one guy is obviously a starting quarterback and the other guy is not. I mean, obviously there's a reason why he's a starter and he's been a starter in this league, but their personality is the personality of the head coach, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And he, I coached against him when he was a player. He's a rugged, tough, hard-nosed football player. And I think he coaches that same way. And you can tell it's indicative of his team. That's what they want to be, and that's what they are. And um, so I think it's more about him than it is about them. I want to go back to what you're saying about pressing a little bit. I mean, when, when guys kind of get in that headspace of pressing a little bit too much, how do you kind of, like, get them out? Is it almost like a funk that you got to get them out of? I mean, what's kind of the dialogue that you have to have? Well, the first thing you try to do as a coach is you try to go back and, and make a couple nice easy calls that are easy to get lined up in that are basic calls that you start at day one and just kind of settle down and just play your position. There's not a lot of thinking involved. It's just go back to something really fundamental to see if that works. That was the problem. That, that didn't work on Sunday. I, that, that was the first thing I did, and that didn't work. So then it was a matter just at halftime we just really had to sit down and talk about, 
it just kind of, it wasn't really so much about X's and O's at halftime as it was about just don't overdo anything. Just do your job. You're trying to do somebody else's job. You can't do that. And when you do somebody else's job, you don't do your job right. And it's a, this, is a, this is not tennis. This is not wrestling. It's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's 11 guys. And if 11 guys don't do their job, it doesn't work. And so, especially against a good team like San Francisco, but it doesn't really work against anybody in the NFL. I mean, it's a, they're good coaches and good players. They'll find the problem and they'll exploit it. So it, it's just, we, we just, that was the whole talk at halftime was just simply, look, we just got to settle down and play. And you, you got to hope that that, you know, they'll do that. And I thought we did better the second half. I was much more pleased with them in the second half. In the first half, I just think we just dug ourselves a hole a little bit in the, in the first half. No. Plays at all, and uh, how did how did you think that impacted things? I mean, in terms of maybe getting guys off kilter a little bit, and off. I know. You know well, I think office, it, office it did. From, yeah. Because I mean, it's like one of the plays that hurt us the most was was there. There were really two plays. Uh, the very first pass down the field to the first pass, a screen pass out there to Kittle. Kittle was we missed a tackle. Okay, and so that, okay, so he gained 23 yards. All right, we're, they, our guys are not the first guy to ever miss a tackle. Okay, but then we knew that he was a big part of their offense. And the thing we were not going to allow him to do was run down the middle of the field and catch a big one down the middle of the field on us. And three plays later, he catches a big one down the middle for 30-some yards, which we are in a defense to prevent that. And that's what's frustrating is when that happens. And we just, it was just one guy not doing what we needed him to do, and that's all it takes. And so I think then all of a sudden, you know, those guys realized that that defense that was called was to prevent that play. And then when you give up a play against a defense that was designed to stop that play, I think everybody feels a little, that, that, and I was saying to me. And so now do I call that defense again, even though I know that's the right defense to be playing, because we didn't, we didn't, Execute it, but I think the players feel that too. So therefore, somebody kind of says, "Okay, well, I'll help." Next time I see that, I'll I'll help. Well, that's going to open something else up. And then we gave up another one where they just threw a quick slant, and the thing went across the field for about thirty. I mean, we haven't done that all year, but we just took terrible angles, which we haven't done. And I think part of it was because we knew they had a pretty good running game. Uh, Debo Samuel, they put him in the backfield. They do all these things, and they really were good on the run on the perimeter. So I think sometimes guys decided to kind of cheat. I'm going to play a little wider over here on the perimeter because of the run. Well, that opens something else. You can't do that. You know, you just got to do what we're coached to do. If they, hey, if they block you and they beat you on that, then they beat you on that. But don't do something else, and then that pre it just presents another problem. And that's what we had to talk about at halftime. It's not about us not being able to do it. Look, there's going to be times guys are going to go up and catch a ball over a DB. Great catch. Guy's an NFL wide receiver. He's going to do that. There's going to be a guy who's going to make a cut in the open field as a running back in this league and make you look silly. That, that's, that's life in a fast lane. Well, but we can't allow things to happen that we know we can prevent from happening. And that's, that's when guys start to press. It's when I pressed. And I'm, and I'm wrong doing it. I'm telling you I'm wrong doing it. You know, I should know better. Just, hey, go back and call it again. See if we see if we were okay. Instead of going, well, geez, what am I going to do now? I got to go to this because that's not work. Well, it, it didn't work on that play. So th I should know better as a coach. They should know better as players. So we're we're all at fault. Are you disappointed, AJ? Did it make the Pro Bowl, or did you pay any attention to that kind of stuff? I, you know what, Josh? I've kind of gotten over that in the years. I used to really get upset about that, but I don't anymore because there's been so many guys I've coached over the years. That to me were willing, or you know, were, were certainly candidates to make it. That didn't. I mean, you can only take so many, and I, you know, the vote is what the vote is. It's, it's, and I'm sure every coach stands and says all of his players at every team says that my linebacker's the best, Mike. My guy's the best rusher. My guy's the best whatever. Everybody can't make it. Like I say, I, when I was younger, that used to really bother me. I'm going, how could they not vote that daggone guy in? And now it's a matter of just, 
hey, I, I know what I believe in the guy and how I think of the guy, and I know how our players think of the guy, and that's all that really, all that really matters. You know, it's kind of like we say as coaches, you know, all I really care about is what the other coaches think of me and what the players think of me, and really everybody else, and my wife, and other than that, and my kids, other than that, what matters? Those are the guys that, that know what's actually going on. I wanted to go back really quickly about what you were talking about um, about Richie last week, and, and you kind of made the comment that um, you sometimes ask him, like, did you see this in Central Florida? And he's like, no. Nah. Like, and he laughs about it. I mean, how much of this year has, for Richie specifically, has really been a learning, teaching, kind of diagnosing, developing year for him? I mean, I know it's his, his rookie year, but I, I don't know. I just feel like for him specifically, he's kind of taken on such a role at nickel that maybe it has been more of that for him this year well it has been a lot more for him i mean he's he's had to take on that role when we lost isaiah and then you know things gone down we tried eric for a while and then we lose eric and it's just like you know we've had a, a rash of injuries and he has to go in and he has to do it but i think when it's all said and done that this will be a great year for him in development because he's had to do so much He's going to realize that this is not vanilla, this is not college, and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to play two coverages, and this is what I got to do. I'm going to play this zone, and I'm going to play this man, and that's it. He's going to play 15 different coverages, 15 different pressures. He's going to have to do all that. That's, that's what it's going to be in this league. That's what's going to be in our system. So I would think then coming back into next year, I mean, he had no idea what he was going to walk into, nothing. And he didn't – also, guys don't realize – that the speed of the game is so much faster. You know, you're not playing somebody for homecoming that you're going to win by 40 points. That's not going to happen any week. Every week is going to be, look at Detroit, Arizona. They're saying that this week at Arizona. Every week is a challenge. Every week teams have good players. The speed of the game is a lot faster. And so I think that's what rookies, especially in the back end, kind of come to find out that everybody they're playing against is good. And so I think this year, when it's all said and done for Richie, it'll be a great growing year. I mean, he's dead. like every rookie, there's goods and there's bads. But I think if they develop and they keep, they also got to learn that being a pro is being a pro. Okay, I don't need somebody, I'm a professional coach. I don't need somebody to come in and get me motivated to start the week. If they do, then I really shouldn't be coaching. Well, it's the same way as a player. I mean, you guys have never been around him. Bill Belichick doesn't give pregame talks. He doesn't. He doesn't say anything. And the reason he doesn't say anything because it's all done during the week. He figures by the time it gets to the game, it's time to play. You're either ready or you're not ready. You're a professional. You get yourself ready. I think they guys, young guys, have to learn to do that too. College walk in, the first film they watch is with the coach in the room. The good pros, first film, most of the guys walk in here on Wednesday, they've already watched all the film. All I got to do is tell them, kind of reiterate, you know, good pros do that. College guys don't do that. I mean, I coached college for 27 years, so I, I know. They expected me to tell them exactly what was going on. These guys should know what's going on before I ever tell them. I'm just going to tell them what we're going to do against it. So. All those things will really help Richie in the long run, and as all the rookies. How quickly can you tell if a player is going to pick that up, that professionalism that you speak of, that they understand that that's part of their job? Can you tell them immediately? No, well, everybody's different, guys. I mean, it's just like some guys you can tell immediately, and they may have come from programs that, that maybe played a more sophisticated defense, and maybe they're used to that kind of stuff, and there's other ones that come from – very vanilla defenses that they don't have to do a whole lot because they're just more talented than everybody else, so they don't have to do a whole lot. But everybody's got a different learning curve. Everybody, it's the same way as learning defense. I mean, some guys are visual learners. Some guys, you can write stuff down, they can remember it. Some guys, you got to do it by reps. Everything, everybody, I'm different. You know, I have to write everything down. I can't look at a, a page, a computer printout, and tell you what it means. I've got to do it by hand, old school. i got to. And so I know that about me. And everybody's like that. So, and it's the same way with that. 
some guys feel like I can't really express myself like I did in college, they were probably a leader. If they were that good of a player to get drafted, they were probably a leader on their football team. Well, now they get in and all of a sudden, okay, I'm looking over there and I'm looking at Jarrett Grady and I'm looking at Dion and I'm looking at these guys thinking, well, they're kind of the leaders. I got to kind of take a back step. N no, you don't need to. We need you to be yourself, but it takes them a while to kind of figure out that, yeah, hey, I can, I can step in here and talk too. So everybody's different. I, I, Usually I can tell when it's starting to happen. I just can't tell you that it's, it's always going to happen right away. Some guys, it takes a little longer. I've had guys, it took a couple of years, and everybody thinks this guy's a wash, and then all of a sudden, oh, where'd this guy come from? Sometimes it happens fast. Sometimes it doesn't. Is there a point in the season where you know that, that you're going to have to keep an eye on some of the rookies, you know, like when you get to Thanksgiving and they, they've got a whole bunch more games that they, they might hit that wall that you're talking about? You, the wall? Yeah, it's it's always difficult that first year. There is a pretty common over the years. There's you know you play twelve games, twelve games, twelve games, and now you're in your twelfth game, and oh, I got five more to go. <laughs> you know, it's not and it's not a bowl game where we had two weeks off. So it, it, you can tell. I mean, it's and it's a lot of plays, and it's so much more physical. You know, it's just. Uh, uh, it probably isn't more plays when you really think about it, because most college games anymore, gosh, they go 80, 90 plays. I mean, college, uh, pro games going to be in 60s to 70s, somewhere in there. So it isn't really about the plays. I think it's about the speed and the violence and the preparation and the whole week leading up. I mean, there's just so much. You know, you got a 20-hour rule in college, which nobody adheres to, but you got a 20-hour rule in college. <laughs> we don't have a 20-hour rule, you know. So all of a sudden, there's a lot more, a lot more involved, and you can tell it. It takes. They got to get through it. Some some do better than others, but I'm really proud of our guys. I think our guys have done a great job. You guys good? Hey, hey. Merry Christmas. John Williams. Thank you. Thank you. Who's that? John Williams got uh, snapped last week. The safety. What John about? Williams, 36. Oh, 36. Yeah. He did a good job. He's doing a good job. I'm really pleased that we had him. Okay.